Hi, I'm Nurse Megan from A Higher Experience, and I just want to thank Drew TZ for having me today. I had a great time. Welcome back to My First Time, the show where our guests get to tell their story of the first time they got high on marijuana. And today I'd like to welcome our guest, Megan Mead. How are you? Hey, how are you, Mike? Very well. Thanks for coming on Drew TV today. You can find more of the good nurse on Instagram at a higher experience. So Megan, can you let us, the audience know where you're located and a little bit about what you've got going on in the cannabis community? Um, I am in Midlothian, Virginia. Uh, I'm a cannabis and psychedelic nurse consultant. My main goal is education um, and getting rid of that stigma out there. And I think education is the best way to do that. So um, I also do one-on-one consults and um, things like that. So education to help with dosing, cannabis and and things like that. Um, Cause some people have never even smoked and my main patients are gonna be hospice and cancer patients, stuff like that. So help people get started on a cannabis journey. Yeah. Awesome. So. Well, we definitely need more people like you out there. So thank you for putting in the good work. And uh, I have a lot of questions for you. Oh. We're we're only going to have so much time, so we'll get to as many as we can. But the first sure, one, sure. Megan, the show's my first time. So the first question is, tell us your story of the first time you got high. Well, it's a little hazy. <laughs> um, I think I was around 14 or 15, to be honest. And it was, we drove beside, it was actually a movie theater at the time, and like a food line. And I hit out of it, it was a metal bowl. That's all I remember. Um, and I don't even remember if I got high. So I just remember having fun. Okay. <laughs> um, and then the second time I got high, we, I was with two other friends <clears throat> and we, we smoked out of a aluminum something. I feel like it was aluminum foil. I don't know, but I got so sick that night. My stomach hurt so bad. I've never been so sick. I I don't Uh, either laced with something or I don't know. But a a couple years um, after that, the one of my the friend I was with, he was like, I got sick too. So I was like, I don't know. So that was not a good experience, but I kept at it. (laughs) And here we are. (laughs) So yeah, but um, yeah. So yeah. when did you realize yeah. cannabis is an intricate part of your health and our endocannabinoid system? And talk to us about, I guess, when and how you became a nurse and when you integrated that with cannabis. Well, um, like I said, I kept kept that smoking um, and I liked that better than drinking. I felt with drinking, I you know, hangovers, all that. And I gained a lot of weight. Okay. So I was like, man, cannabis is just so much better. I feel better, you know? Um, but back then it it feels like we were mainly focused on THC and that high level. So I started getting anxious and having panic attacks and stuff like that. Um, you know, and I was still drinking. So, uh, once I, I stopped drinking is when mainly the anxiety calmed down. So drinking is just, I don't, I just don't understand why people are so into drinking and not marijuana. So um, I then, you know, went to nursing school, still kind of had anxiety real bad, but got through nursing school, got my associates, had a kid. Then I got my bachelor's um, all while smoking pot. I mean, the entire time I never quit never quit um and then here we are um so i wish somebody would have told me earlier would have put those two words together cannabis nurse i wish they would have put those two words together for me way earlier than they did because i started my business about a year ago and um it was like two years ago my friend sarah said you know why don't you be a cannabis nurse and i was like oh my god why didn't I think about that? Because I've always been learning about cannabis. I've, I've always been interested in it and um, studied it on my own time. 
And so now, you know, then I just made it a point after my bachelor's, I started taking classes on the endocannabinoid system and um, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to take this interpreting class. So that'll be fun. I think I'm just going to ruin smoking pot for myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and here we are, you know, here we are. So I'm just very um, much to probably my mother's dismay. I am a cannabis and psychedelic nurse. So um, I just think they're very important for people. And I, I really want to get the information out there to people because we never learned about it in school. We didn't learn about the endocannabinoid system or, or anything like this. We we were taught um, marijuana is bad. That's all. Marijuana is bad. And I still feel guilty sometimes still. And I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of it completely. I shouldn't feel bad. They don't People go to bars and get like slam wasted and can drive home. Not what? No, you know, and it ruins people's lives and we can't even talk about cannabis. Like I can't. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. That's, that's just my feelings about it. So I'm here to do that. I'm here to get rid of that stigma. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired of it. Yeah, we should feel bad that we can't use it or can't talk about it or that we can't grow it. And possess it in certain Are they states. measuring alcohol in ounces on the way out of the, the liquor store here? No, they're not. It's sitting, uh, my mom's um, fiance, I was sitting out back by myself, 10 o'clock at night, smoking some, and he comes out and he's getting ready to go to bed and he's looking around and he said, y'all smell something funny in the garage? And I was like, I haven't been in the garage. We were sitting on the back stoop. It wafted, you know, into the garage, right? And he was like, it smells like marijuana. <laughs> and I said, that's because it is. <laughs> okay, that's because it is, you know, and then we had this whole, you know, I felt shame. Why? No, right. you're not going to shame me when you have a bottle of liquor sitting on your counter. And you're going to ask me if I have it locked up for my kids. Of course I do. Of course I have it locked up because I'm responsible. You know, so You know, yeah. I could go for hours. <laughs> There's lots of work to do. Lots of work. Lots of work. Lots of work. Um, so let's talk about, because I know you've got a lot to say. What are some of the biggest challenges you see either with patients or dealing with the medical industry, being <clears throat> uh, cannabis and psychedelic consultant? Okay. Um, I don't like the dispensary. I, I really, it is not the best quality and they want to charge an extreme amount of money for it okay as a cannabis nurse i am required to recommend the dispensary okay but what i like to do you know i, I really like people to get their cards their medical cards to have that as a protection just say if you get pulled over hey you have some on you i know it's legalized or whatever and you know adult use but it's just nice to have right and you can take a dispensary. Um, most people that have just starting out don't know any better. So they are buying really expensive stuff and it doesn't work for them because the bud tenders there don't know what they're doing. Okay, they're not considering these patients um, disorders and, and the medicine they're on. Okay, that's a big factor because some people that have heart conditions can't, shouldn't, do cannabis or, or THC or CBD, right? I mean, there's there's a couple of, you know, instances where that's the case. Um, so really I recommend having, you know, growing it yourself, having a friend grow it for you, you know, or you know, gift it, gift it to you, right? That's, that's mainly what I recommend. Um, also getting patients, um, since it's not, federally legal, right? I have friends in the, you know, cancer, um, work in the cancer wards and work in the hospice facilities. They can't recommend me because they have to have approval from their bosses. Well, physicians aren't gonna make money off of cannabis. They're not gonna make money because insurance, I can't file, I can't file an insurance. Do you see what I mean? They can't, they can't, they have to pay me in cash. They can't, 
you know, insurance doesn't cover my services yet, as of yet, until it's legalized. Um, so that's another barrier. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically, I'm here to help patients find their strain from the get go. So taking this interpreting class, I'll be able to look at it, smell it and be like, um, you know, what do you want to feel like, you know, and know their condition and really customize it for the patient. Um, right. And and really make it an individualized. Because you know, that's what it, it really is. It really is. If you want to use it medicinally and not just want to get high, it, it is it is you really need to um, talk to somebody and really, you know, it is it is a, a drug, you know, you can't die from it, but it still can make you feel uncomfortable and you and new patients really need to start slow so that's what i'm here for and um we'll get through these it'll inevitably it'll be you know the people are going to win and we're going to get get it legalized decriminalized all that so regulated eventually because we're going to win <laughs> so i think so i know so i hope so uh, all those things uh i'm going to want to tell you uh uh anecdote maybe a story of my own we were at a festival recently and you know there's always the vendors who are signing people up for their medical cards and so i'm over talking about dro tv introducing myself and they said oh, are you up for renewal you have your medical card i said i don't have a medical card and i said well why not i said well i think there's major problems with the system the system in general it's i'm from massachusetts i'm now here in florida it's you pay a doctor to just write on a piece of paper that you have something that requires you or allows you to get medical marijuana. Then it's you pay marijuana. another mm -hmm. license, permit fee, whatever. And so I, I was saying to this woman, I said, now I'm going to go to a dispensary and pay more than what I would get it from my buddy who grows for a dispensary and uh, you know, I said, I'm I'm eliminating all that whole process. And so she turned around and said, well, you do realize that the more people we get in the system that have medical cards, the more money flows into the system, the more resources become available. And, and I said, but you're also, I'm just, I just told you why I don't think the system works. And you just said, I should get in the system to help other people. I'm all for helping people. I'm all for helping people. But my problem is, and she said, you should just pay. She said, she said to me, you should just pay to be in the system so that other people can be helped. And I said, I just told you everything wrong that I think is wrong with the system. So you want me to continue to pay into that system for someone else to get help? Because we can help people other than just don't need them. signing them up for, for this extension of the medical industry. I mean, so from, from my point of view, I've always been kind of, black market i mean i don't you know i'm not a uh uh entrepreneur as far as uh that that goes um uh, entrepreneur for other things but um you know so i i understand where uh maybe the older generation they probably should get a card because they that's you know there's less information for them available they probably it's also don't. hard for them to get it okay um okay where else would they get it, right? What if they don't know somebody that, Absolutely. Does, you know, yep. I, I can help facilitate that because there's people that donate to certain groups. Um, there's people that donate um, their own grows, you know, for free and, and you know, they donate and to the homeless, to cancer, hospice, veterans, um, it's possible, but we need more people to do it. It's, it's not enough people, you know, it's, so if I, if they don't have the dispensary, where would they get a THC, a one-to-one -one ratio? Where would they get that THC to CBD ratio unless they buy separate products? And I don't trust see anything CBD on the shelves right now because it's not regulated, right? It's most of it's not tested. If you show me a tested product, then sure. Um, my friend at Good Health Herbs, she, um, she has some legit stuff there, so. Um, and that's in Chesterfield, Virginia. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Hey, everybody. I want to quickly mention Food Forest Abundance. 
Food forest abundance is a great way to create your own self-sustaining food forest and naturally occurring ecosystem that's commonly found in nature, but designed specifically for you. Through multiple layers of trees, shrubs, herbs, vines, rhizomes, mushrooms, and perennial vegetables, you can become your own supply chain without the typical maintenance required of a garden. From small spaces to large areas, both urban and suburban, Food Forest Abundance wants us to get back to our roots in nature by engaging with our food production in a meaningful way. For more information, click on the link in the description below and start your journey today. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. I don't know. We'll get there. I'm working hard to figure it out. Lots of, still lots of unanswered things and a lot of things that need to be in motion for me to, you know, so all I can help people do, like I said, is with or without your card, you don't have to have your card to see me. People that, when the physicians write in your recommendation, they don't, they can't dose you. They don't know about it. They can just say, oh, I think you're a good candidate for it. They're not gonna help you know what to do. So if you just go in there willy nilly and buy whatever, and it doesn't work for you, say you buy a gram of of rosin and that doesn't work for you, it makes you anxious, you wasted $90. Mm -hmm. 90 dollars absolutely not you know but i know that's rosin's a lot more expensive but i feel like their quality is not there right and i feel like for good quality yeah and you can make it last but it's just i don't know (laughs) so i'm here to help people find their strains from the get-go so they can we can solve that problem and they won't have to be spending tons you know tons of money so my uh my girlfriend was an ER nurse for 13 years now she works wow. at, she Great. works at it in an infusion <laughs> spa and we're we both see a holistic doctor we're big on mm-hmm. uh practical and natural medicine and which is what plant so medicine people is. solve everything eating well and exercising is key absolutely yes. uh nu- nutrition <laughs> i always say nutrition's like 80 percent of it um it is. It is. and But both of us, she has really nothing to do with cannabis. She's learning more because I'm in it now. But, um, you know, both of us, we look at the, like I said, the the medical arm, the extension of the medical industry into cannabis. And that's, that's how we almost view dispensaries where I saw you just did a post recently on going into a gas station and they had a hundred different Delta eight, Delta 10, HHC. And we're, we're really concerned with, I'll shout these guys out real quick. Um, We're really concerned with what's in this stuff. This is a, a, a company. I just did a review video on here's the ingredients on this product, organic beet sugar, organic tapioca syrup, organic cane sugar, organic natural flavors, organic coconut oil, organic avocado oil, Then I have another gummy from a company that has doctor in their name, has yellow five, red, Mm. red, number one, blue, red, 40, 41. Yeah. And uh, (laughs) like whatever number. Right. And so uh, I don't, I don't have to believe our FDA that says it's safe when other countries Uh, ban ban the products. I know it. It's terrible. It's terrible. And here we have what's supposed to be a medicine to help people. And they don't, you know, if I go into a dispensary, be okay. They don't, they don't want us to be okay because if we're okay, they're losing money. Okay. Right. It's all about the money and I'm, I'm just, I'm over it. So, which is also why I, I mean, I don't support a huge black market because I only need a little bit for myself. But this is why I, I support my friend because he's, a horticulturist and he doesn't want to grow something that has mites on it or pesticides or, and so I, I, me personally, I'm, this is just me. I know him. I can go there. I can see it. I can watch the whole process, but I feel like the other way I'm kind of feeding into a system that needs to be starved in the first place. And that we need to focus more on an individual, like what you're doing and, it's great. I didn't didn't even think of or was aware of these uh, donation 
type situations. Sure, where, right? uh, I know the, there's a lot of, I think, thousands of pounds or hundreds of thousands of pounds in the state of New York right now that are just sitting there that can't be sold. It'd be yeah, nice if those could be... Uh, It'll be distributed. garbage by the time they get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and if it's in plastic bags, it's probably not any good anyways. <laughs> right. You know, right. um, so a lot of work to be done. It's slow, very slow very, very slow, but we'll get there. I can only hope, you know, I've been wishing to just um, be able to just have it even legal since I was 16, right? Right. So, yeah. But, um, can we talk a little bit about psychedelics? I'm assuming if you're a consultant, you've partaken in, in some magic. That's a little emotion. bit harder than cannabis. Um, I've definitely taken um, mushrooms. Um, they're not my thing because I am on medicine. I'm on SSRIs and they could possibly interact. So I just, my medicine works for me, even though I'm not a big pharmaceutical person for my anxiety and things like that. And, and it really helps. And I can't, I'm not gonna, unless it stops working for me, then maybe I'll consider going towards, you know, psilocybin microdosing all the time but i can help other people in the meantime and it's so prevalent out there in the black market that people really need to be informed about it because um since there's no studies no research i mean there there has been some and i know it's been beneficial but we need peer-reviewed articles here we need solid evidence before i can say hey go take this amount. You know what I mean? Everybody's different. Everybody's going to react different. And when you're using psychedelics, you need to have somebody with you a lot of times, depending on how much you take, it can make you, it could do the opposite of what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important that if you're going to take more than a small microdose a day, like if you're going to go to that threshold, um, that you have somebody with you and you're in a good frame of mind. Um, and I feel like I've just seen, I've, I've actually seen a couple people, I've actually seen a couple people lose their minds over smoking too much pot. They just, I, I don't know. And then I've also seen another person flip out or, you know, doing mushrooms, they passed out and hit a glass table and, you know, so I've seen, I've seen that side, you know, um, it's not pretty, you know, and it's really important. They are medicine. It is medicine and that you are, you know, with teen, you know, the teens out there and it being so prevalent in the black market, there just needs to be education. So that's really basically I can help with dosing, but it's not legal, you know, it's still illegal. So my main goal is education and educating people, you know, Hey, don't take this. Don't don't just go out into the woods and take this because this will kill you. You know, you need to be aware of what you're taking and, you know, um, just, just, yeah. Yeah, that's all. Just education is my main goal for that part right now until we get a little bit farther with the decriminalization of, you know, psychedelics and stuff like that. So, right. Yeah. But, um, I, I think it'll help people. Definitely veterans and can't wait for it to I can't wait so it's gonna be yeah, great. I'm, wonder, I'm wondering what what is what it's actually going to take for it to become I mean Joe Biden right now can sign an executive order he can deschedule marijuana um yeah, they can do anything they want to they're it, they're they're uh, biding time until they can figure out the best way to make the most money mm-hmm how money, and, money and control. Off of it. Money and control. I always say control is a part of it too because they don't. It is power. Right. Power. Right. So. Power over the people. All, all over. A, I was going to say a silly plant, but it's an amazing plant. It's an it's amazing, amazing plant. Amazing. It's not. It's. Yeah. I, yeah. I I couldn't agree more. 
So, so Megan, what's your preferred method of consumption? Uh, you mess with the uh, concentrates, oils. I mess with a little all of it. Um, okay. I I like smoking out of a bowl. I'm not. I'll be honest. That's I really just like smoking out of a bowl. Um, for a while, I did go to concentrates. I did wax. You know, I do like wax. Um, I have a vape pen that I use, and just um, you know, I keep it clean, and you know, it really doesn't get messy. And it's the Aris Eight uh, I get from Culture. Um, it's just a great little pen, and it's discreet, and it's black, and you can just you know, very discreet, and it doesn't stink. Um. I used to, when I was younger, I love bongs a lot, but people aren't going to like me for this. Um, using water pipes are not really good for your lungs. You know, all that moisture, extra moisture in your lungs is not good. I mean, occasionally, yeah. I mean, I love a good bong hit. Uh, it's not too good to use every day. Um, and I love a good joint, especially those baby jeeters, but they're probably not really good for me. <laughs> <laughs> but they sure are good tasting um so yeah so good old bowl and i've broken plenty of them <laughs> awesome. so well, megan we uh, appreciate you coming on the show and sharing some information with us educating us as always that's what we like to do here is spread the information uh, please let us know uh, let everybody know the best place they can follow you um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, you can, you know, book an appointment or just contact me. I do free consult um, to see if you're even interested in, in trying can cannabis if you've never um, been on a, a regimen um, or have ever used it. Um, you can email me, uh, nursemegan at a higher experience.com, or um, you can call me. And I can't even remember my. My work number off the top of my head because it's brand new. Will you post it? Do you we'll add it? To yeah, me? no worries. We'll post it. <laughs> but um, uh, that's it. I don't have a website yet because it's just little old me. So maybe one day I'll I'll get one. And you know, but right now just 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 call me. You know, we'll talk. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, thanks for being a great guest. Thanks for having me on the show today. You're welcome. If you enjoy content like this, make sure you go down and hit the like button, share this with a friend, and make sure you subscribe to Dro TV because otherwise you'd miss great guests like Megan and conversations like this one. So thank you for everybody tuned in today. That's it. As always, smoke them if you got them. What's up, Drow TV family? You can now stream the audio version of all these episodes on your favorite podcast player. And if you like more episodes like this, check out this playlist we put together over here for you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube. You don't want to miss more great content from Drow TV. Thank you for tuning in. And as always, smoke them if you got them.